as you make your way down Highland Street, you'll turn to the left and you'll see the First Baptist Church of Winsboro. Well, looky there, there's a Welcome Center sign. I think I will uh, follow the sign and looks like it's pointing to this first door here. Uh, let's make our way over here and open up the door and look and see what we can see. Oh, well now, looky here, here's a hallway. And then right here it says Sunday School Welcome Center, coffee, juice, and refreshments uh, from 9 to 9.40 a.m. And so let's go in here and we see some uh, coffee makers ready to be used, a uh, table uh, that refreshments will go on, ready to receive some refreshments uh, so that it can give them out uh, to the rest of us. But as we make our way down the, this hall again, look, here's a, here's a children's room. Uh, I would say that's probably one and two year olds, uh, but we can make our way down this hallway uh, and as we do, we'll just keep walking and here's a door that we can turn. Uh, it says uh, nursery at the top, all right? So if we walk in here, uh, to the right is a nice little kitchenette uh, ready for juice and cookies for the kids. Uh, and if we make our way in here, this is the nursery, beautiful nursery. Uh, mural on the wall there, just a beautiful place for your child if you should choose to come and bring your child to the First Baptist Church. Uh, all of this almost basically new, ready uh, for your child. Look at this nice carpet, uh, nice uh, table, their size, look at that, uh, for the toddlers which are in the next room. But let's wait, we don't want to miss this. Oh look, it's Noah's Ark, kids. Ha. <laughs> How awesome is that? All on the wall there. There's Noah, uh, or that's Mrs. Noah, <laughs> and she's got, she's greeting the animals as they come in. But as we make our way through this little spot here, we'll find this, I do believe, is the toddler's room. All the toys and everything's ready. Oh my goodness, look at all of these things you can play with and have fun with. Uh, and so we're gonna come in here and I wanna talk to you. I wanna say a few words today. Oh look, there's a bear. I don't think he'll hurt anyone. Uh, but I want to say a few words today about something I think is very important. So let me just uh, come around here and uh, let me just share with you uh, what's on my mind uh, today. Uh, I'm here, at the, as I said, at the nursery of the First Baptist Church of Winsboro. And uh, this is one of the cleanest locations in the entire building. Uh, why? Because it's been cleaned and it's been prepared for your children uh, and your children haven't been here and neither have mine because mine are too old but no child has been here lately uh, and we know why, don't we? Uh, because of this virus. Uh, but uh, we, this, this nursery is ready. This nursery is ready for your children uh, and that, it, it will be ready. We have wonderful volunteers who are uh, more than cheerful, more than nice uh, to take care of your children during uh, worship uh, and Sunday school. But we have Sunday school for most of the children, uh, other than the babies, of course. Uh, but since we are in the nursery, I thought we might spend a few moments talking about becoming a child. Becoming a child. You may be thinking, what? I waited all my life to get to this point, and I, I, I never want to go back. <laughs> Being a child stunk. Maybe that was your kid. Maybe that was your little. Uh, you know. Maybe that was the way you felt about being a child. Some of us uh, may be thinking, "I liked it better when I was a child. I'd like to go back. I had no worries. Uh, I had food. I had clothes. I had shelter. Boy, I had everything I needed, and I didn't even have to work for it. And most of us would love just to be a child again. Those certainly were the days." Well, the Bible tells us how God approaches children and how, in some respects, we are to be like them. Listen to Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through, uh, or 1. Uh, it says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They were curious, maybe even a bit selfish, hoping, maybe thinking that they would be named as being the greatest. Remember, the disciples are expecting Jesus to establish his kingdom here on the earth. And so they're, they're, they're looking, where do I fit in? 
uh, where, where, where am I in all of this? Uh, they were thinking his kingdom would come in their lifetime and soon, you know, soon. Uh, and so they're, they were thinking it would be on earth and they're watching and they're waiting. Listen to verse 2. It says, And he called a child to himself and set him before them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus takes the idea of status and privilege and throws it out of their minds, doesn't he? He throws it out of their minds for the moment and he directs them to the child who is there. Now, why does he do this? Because who's the greatest is not important. The relationship with him is what is important. How we approach the Son of God, how we approach God himself is important. God, you see, is all about relationship. He's all about relationship, not putting us in places of privilege and power. How do we become like children, though? If that's what he wants us to be like, how do we become like children? In the time of Jesus, children were not highly valued. Jesus takes them to a place where they are, are extremely valued. He places a high value on them. He holds them up as examples to his disciples. He takes them as children and says, look, you guys need to be like these children. You need to be like this child you're looking at right now. That's what he's saying to them. What are, what, what are children like? They're dependent on the adults in their lives for everything. They need the adults in their lives to provide for them a sense of security, to provide for them, to protect them. And children depend on parents, adults, to do that for them. They are fully dependent on the adults in their lives. And this, this is what God wants to get across to his disciples. This is what he wants them to understand. Making it into heaven is not accomplished by gaining a certain status. It's not by getting enough awards to make it. No, that's not how you do it. Making it to heaven comes by totally depending on God for salvation, security, protection, and provision, and any other P words you can come up with. I'm telling you, God wants you and I to depend fully on Him. Now, this runs very closely along the lines of us not leaning on to our own understanding, uh, but trusting in God with all of our heart. The moment we come to a point where we are dependent upon what we know and what we think is the moment we're not approaching God as a child. If the knowledge and the thoughts that we're thinking are completely ours and are not God-directed, then we have stepped out of the childlike faith that God wants and longs for us to have. This trusting faith that a child has is all that he or she has. They trust the adults in their lives when they're young. They depend on them to hear the truth, to provide for them, and to protect them. And that's where God wants us. That's where God wants us. This same attitude and way of living is what God desires of you and me. We're to trust in Him for the truth, for provision, for protection. Where are you? Where are you with God in being like a child? Do you have that attitude? Are you, are you trusting Him for protection today? Are you depending on Him like a child depends upon a parent? How is your life like that of a trusting child toward a trusting adult like God? And God's more, of obviously, than an adult. But where is your life? How is your life like a trusting child? How is your life like that today? Are you trusting in Him? Are you depending fully on God for everything? 
Or are you taking things into your own hands and thinking, well, I'm just going to worry about this? What are you doing? How are you handling all of this today? Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the, the true sense of security that you bring to all of us because you are Almighty God and you are in control. And Father, thank you for reminding us of that. Having you in our lives certainly, certainly makes things easier. But Father, we must depend on you. We must trust in you. So God, help us to do that, just like a little child does with the adults in his life. Help us, Father, to depend and trust on you, trust in you. God, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to remind you to go ahead and pray tonight for those whom you're concerned about, those who are suffering, those who are in need of God's care and provision. Pray for Mitch Reynolds, pray for Mark Whitney, pray for others that you may know who have the virus. Uh, pray, talk to the Lord, trust in him. Trust in him like a little child. Oh, one more thing. Did you hear about the kidnapping at the local church? It's okay. He was just sleeping. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Look, until next time, uh, remember this Sunday, 1045, the worship time, worship service, all of us together, uh, online, together worshiping the Lord. Remember also that you matter to God and to us at the First Baptist Church of Winsboro.